today is the third second Sunday of the morning of the time. This Mass is being offered for Eleanor Vesesky and Clemens Vitoro. We have the following announcements. Rest in peace to Jesuit brother John Hollywood and Lucy Dunn. Lucy's funeral Mass will be on Monday at 10.30 a.m. Mass at St. Clair with CC will be held on Monday at 6 p.m. followed by exposition and confessions until 8 p.m. Mass on Tuesday will be at Open Cross at 8.30 a.m. There is no evening Mass on Tuesday. There will be no Mass Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. All parish property will be securely brought in the morning. The Mass book for 2022 opens next week. Please consult the bulletin for important announcements. Orders are now being placed for the Holy Cross Christmas candy sale. Orders must be placed by November 28th. Candy makers are appreciated. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and spirits of the devil. May God be given in the name of the Lord, and to thou, O Prince of Heaven, most, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all evil spirits, who are out of the world, to see the world of souls. Amen. Our entrance here is number 234 in the People's Mass Book. We gather together. Please stand.
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. She left to get it, and he called out after her, Please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar, and a little oil in my jug. Just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first, make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil go dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and he and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. The response to our song is number 474. So also Christ, 
offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The word of the Lord.
divided it however she did. Ob took what she and her son needed and offered the rest to the bride. In looking at that, we can kind of get to what we traditionally hold that God asks of us, our time, our talent, and our treasure. When we think about serving God and loving God, that love is not like a Hallmark card where we just read about it and feel warm and fuzzy and then go on our merry way. When we are to love God and respond, it necessarily prompts in us, invokes in us, draws in us an action, something to be done in response to God's love to us. And that's where we traditionally hold time, talent, and treasure. So time, that's perhaps before COVID the most sensitive topic we would have because everybody was overly committed. We didn't have a lot of time to do things. So people didn't volunteer a lot. Then COVID hit and we were all flooded with a lot of time. And now we're coming out of it and we have to answer that question. Loving God with all our being, what does it mean then to offer God the gift of our time? Well, each of us has to answer that individually. It's not a matter of I can sit here and say, we have 24 hours, eight should sleep, and this and that, no, no. When I say offer to God our time, I'm not just talking about volunteering. We need to offer God not only our services, but our time in prayer, our time in quiet reflection. If our prayer consists of purely singing our Father and a Hail Mary each day, that's not offering God our time. If our prayer does not include at least some little bit of time sitting and quietly listening for God to respond to us, we're not really giving God all of our time that we should give, that we need to give in prayer. Again, each of us has to answer this for ourselves. The gift of talent. We could, I could give an entire homily about how everyone in this church is gifted by God, uniquely, individually. And no one has the same gifts and talents. And if you do, they're not the same kind of way. So all of us are given some very special gifts to put to the service of God. But here's where we kind of stumble. We might look at someone, for instance, they're a great operatic singer. And we think, I could never sing that well. I shouldn't even try to be a cantor at church. Well, for one year, the seminarian that sat next to me couldn't carry a tune with a handle. And yet, he did not miss any opportunity to sing a joyful noise to God. And I consoled myself with saying, well, God gave him the gift, so God has to take it back. So, we might not have the gifts perfect the way we would want them, but they are given out of love to us by God. For those that are gifted in making candy, please do so. My family really liked the apple dumplings. Now I'm on the radar for everything that the school club county people are making, because apparently down in the valley, things are better up here, and they taste better. I got, actually got in trouble, because I only bought one apple dumpling for family member, and they couldn't believe it was only one. They're huge. I said, well, just because you coughed it down with one sitting, and I cut mine in half. But if you have a gift, offer it, and offer it joyfully. Offer it in a way that only you can, because only God has given it to you to put to the service. I could go through all the different gifts and if you don't think you have a gift, or you don't think you have gifts or talents, you do. It's just the devil telling you, you don't. So I would ask, if you're not sure if you have gifts and talents, if you're not sure what they are, if you don't think you have any, take this Mass as the perfect moment to offer a personal intention to the Holy Spirit, that he will tell you what gifts and talents you have so that you may put them to the joyful service and offer a loving response to God our Father. 
finally the gift of our talent and you know this one the church gets a bad reputation on I think all the church needs money well, they always ask for money well we kind of do because the lights the water you know the upkeep none of this is free and things just keep getting more and more expensive and we do need to make parishioners aware of what their parish expenses are. And in doing that, we have an obligation to take care of our parish. But it doesn't mean that Monsignor Glosser or myself or Bishop Schler want you to give all your money so you don't have any left for you. Certainly that is not what the reading we had in the first reading was. The widow wasn't expected to give everything. She was expected to keep what she needed. But when it becomes, well, when I'm comfortable, then I can start giving. I can tell you, the devil will make sure that you're never comfortable. He will keep upping your crises, upping what you think you need. Very often, when I do marriage prep, and I say to the couple, you know, at the second or third meeting, I say, I call dibs on the baptism of your first child. You know, I, I do want to baptize the child, but I also do it because it kind of tells me what they're thinking. And you would be surprised how many times I hear from couples, Father, we're not going to have kids right now. And I look at them and I say, oh, well, we need to save up money. We have to have enough money for them so they can go to college. And that's where I scratch my head and say, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> I said, can you give me a dollar amount of how much you think you need before you'll be comfortable with children? And they look at me and their eyes wide. Because the devil tricks us into thinking we need more for ourselves and we can't give. And I'm not just talking now about money, I'm talking about time and talent as well. If we're waiting till we're comfortable, waiting till we're perfected, waiting till all our ducks in a row, I can tell you the ducks have already flown away. They're never going to be in a row. We're never going to get those old fish together or those cats. So we have to look at the here and the now. What do I have to offer to God now? What, like the widow, can I put to the service of the faithful of God? In the Gospels of the multiplication of the loaves and fishes, it points out that a child, somebody very lowly, offers the bare minimum of what they have. And bushelfuls were left with. Because when we take the very gifts and talents and treasures that God has given us and we place them at His service, we are lovingly and we are offering them to God so that He can bless them, multiply them. How He does it, I don't know. But He's God. He can do it. He just needs us to love Him with all our heart all our soul, all our mind, and all our being. And to place the love of the gifts, the talents, the treasures in us at His loving service so that we may participate in His loving plan of salvation for indeed the world. Yes.
great faith and trust in God our Father, we present to him these our prayers and petitions. For all members of the church, through God's grace, may we continue to serve him through our lives of intentional discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. For political leaders, may God's wisdom inspire them in seeking the common good above all else. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, the poor, and the mourning, may God's gracious mercy bring them comfort and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. For this faith community, may the Holy Spirit help us to bear good fruit in service to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may they soon rest in the fullness of God's kingdom together with all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we offer you these prayers and petitions. We ask you to look upon those you make known and those we hold in the silence of our hearts and answer them according to your holy will. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
make holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them when they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
this sacred gift of you. We give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may be in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth in peace, glorifying the Lord. Bye. Thanks. Our recessional hymn is number 541. Praise God. Thank you.